and welcome to Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, and I'm here with Randy Rubenstein, um, who you can find over at randyrubenstein.com. She is a parenting coach and author, and she wrote a really great book called The Parent Gap. Did I get that right? Yep, that's it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the book. So the book, I call it The Parent Gap because what I found is that there's this gap that pretty much every parent I've ever talked to feels, and it's the gap between the parent that you want to be and the parent you are when your kids are pushing your buttons, especially when you have a particularly challenging child that doesn't just push your buttons, but seems to stomp on them. And what I do is I teach parents, um, I teach them tools and what I call the new parenting conversation so that they can close the gap. And even when their kids are being challenging, they can show up as the parent that they really want to be. Now you started this work because you had a son who was um, a little difficult, right? Yeah. That, I mean, I really didn't set out... I didn't set out to do this work. I was a mom and I had a baby and he startled easily and he wouldn't sleep no matter what the book said. And he cried a lot. And I, I just was kind of on the hunt for information and I was faced with a challenge. And now I know the way my brain is wired. When I'm faced with a challenge, I go into fact finder mode and then I go into trying this and trying that. And I was just kind of on a mission to, to understand my child and to, you know, I just felt like there's a certain amount of thing that happens for a baby, but I always just knew he was just overstimulated kind of by the world from the get go. And it just felt like I was kind of, I can't even, it, I, I can't even like say that it was intentional. I just felt this like maternal pull to figure it out. So I read a ton of books and kind of got on this path of learning and just trying to figure my kid out. That's amazing. And as a result, I think you've done a really exceptional job of integrating really good conversation into your life. And I know that that's part of, part of what a rich life looks like to you. So how do you, how do you integrate that rich conversation into your world? You know, that's really become kind of the crux of the work that I do is changing the conversations within our home. And what I've uncovered is that there was this old conversation that was being had in home after home. And it really was based on this model of, you know, kids need to be compliant and they need to just follow the rules. And it was all about, you know, almost like the parent was up here and the kid was down here and um, and we were talking at kids and it really is based it's interesting i first kind of made the connection by something that seth godin made seth seth godin said he said you know the old world was based on this factory worker model and i realized like that's what our parenting that's what the parenting model really was it was about raising your kids because one day they were going to fly the nest, fly from the nest, and we needed to make sure they were going to make it out in the world. And so we wanted them to, to, you know, understand that there was somebody in authority that they were going to be answering to, and there was a certain way to show up and be civilized. And, and it was all about kind of external motivation. Like, you know, you go and you do the right thing and you show up to your job and you get a paycheck. And at some point you've earned enough money in your pension and you can retire. Right. And so, um, and so I thought about it and I was like, we're not raising factory workers. And I don't know any parent that's like, I want my kid to grow up and be a factory worker. We want them to be, to think for themselves and, and to stand up against bullying and not to succumb to peer pressure and to go out into the world in this confident way and feel like they can do anything. They can be innovators and scientists change agents. And it takes a lot of confidence to, to become that person. So if our parenting model is based on this old school way, then it, it just seemed counterintuitive. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. And what I found in my own home 
was when I changed the conversations and I really got to know how each of my children were wired and they're all individuals. It's not a one size fits all model, but the conversation is, is a conversation that is kind of a one size fits all model because it's just this kind of collaborative process. And even though it's not, I, I say it's not authoritarian parenting like the old school method, but it's also not permissive. It's kind of like almost like, um, like being that positive soccer coach that is like, you know, the kids show up to practice and they work hard and things are are orchestrated and um, and they're going to have an amazing workout and everybody's learning and the coach is clearly the team leader. So the parent is clearly the team leader and so our kids are looking to us to run these conversations in a way that doesn't break their spirit and also lets them feel safe in the world because they know like mom and dad they're they're in charge. They're going to ultimately say no or yes to certain things that I want to do. And, and I'm going to be okay with it because I also feel like I'm celebrated. I'm honored as the person I am and things feel very kind of um, civilized. It just feels civilized. It doesn't feel like you ever have to kind of bring down the hammer. And um, it, cause I said, so case closed, like all that business, like we, we, there's a better way to do it. And the other thing is, is, I have people ask me all the time about, well, how do you get your kids to do the right thing or to study if you're not paying them for grades or doing sticker charts or threatening that you're going to take away certain privileges? Like, don't you punish? Like, don't you discipline? And I'm like, absolutely, I discipline. And sometimes there are natural consequences. I mean, my 16-year-old daughter just lived an entire semester paying back a debt to us because she bumped, she was a new driver and she, she had a fender bender and her car had to get fixed. And it was a whole semester of her working to pay back the money to us. So yes, there are natural consequences, but kids want to do the right thing. And when the conversation is held in this kind of positive light, they do, they do do the right thing and they don't feel this need to rebel and become kind of on opposing teams with you, especially during the teenage years when they're ready to spread their wings. Mm. That seems like such a, such an important and valuable lesson. Like I, I know that I, as a child did not do well with the, because I said so <laughs> style of parenting. Right. So. Right. And you know, and the thing is, is that the kids that propel us to learn this new conversation, the way it used to, those kids used to be thought of, it is like, oh, nothing I do works with this kid. They just want to dig their heels in. But the truth is, is that those are the kids really, I think, with leadership energy. And when channeled in the right way and when the conversation is productive, well, guess what? They go on to show up super confidently in the world and completely kick ass because that's how they were born. That's how they were wired. They were meant to be leaders. So when we have this different kind of conversation and it feels good for them, we propel them forward to go out and do what they're meant to do, which is lead. Yeah. So Randy, what advice would you give to parents who are struggling to have these conversations with their kids? So it takes a minute to, um, to learn how to have this new conversation because what happens when we're in these triggered moments, and there's a lot of science behind this because I kind of started with the child development and then I got hooked on um, learning about how the brain works and what's happening in our brains when we're in these triggered moments and we have, you know, these flooded stress hormones are, are racing through our body and we can't think clearly because what happens is, is that when you're in those moments, all of your old programming from when you grew up, that's what comes online. And that's when we find ourselves doing the, because I said so, and yelling and, and threatening and name calling and bribing and doing all that stuff that we, we really don't want to do, but we don't know a different way until we learn the new way. And so what I would say is, is any of the programs that have to do with conscious parenting positive parenting. I have a program. Um, there's amazing podcasts out there, but 
really filling your brain with this new style of communicating with your kids and everything. I have people say to me all the time, this is also logical. Like it just makes sense. And I say to people, I say, I'm not going to teach you anything that doesn't have the duh factor, like the brick to the head. Like, of course, this is so logical. Of course, we should be talking to our kids like this. Why on earth would we think we were going to get cooperative behavior when we're demanding and threatening and doing all these aggressive, you know, using all these ag aggressive tactics. It just doesn't make sense. So it takes a minute to learn. And I would say, start there, start filling your brain with some, the new style, get your hands on resources and tools. And in this beautiful day of information, we have amazing resources uh, on our smartphones while we're driving in the car, while we're at the grocery store, while we're running errands, like you can learn so much. And then it's about repetition, repetition, because when you practice and practice and totally screw it up and it's awkward and weird at the beginning, but you keep practicing, practicing before you know it, you're creating new neural pathways and you retrain your brain. And this new conversation starts to come naturally. Hmm. That's, that's great advice, Randy. I really appreciate you being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. And can I leave one practical tool yeah. where people can start? So, so yes, I mean, I do a little Facebook live series every Monday. If you, want, if you guys want to like my page on Facebook, it's Randy Rubenstein, Parent Coach. Um, and it's just a Facebook live series. It's about, it's between 10 and 15 minutes. And I model specific real life scenarios that people write into me about and how to have these productive conversations. I follow kind of this three part model. So start there and just start listening. There's backed episodes you can watch. And the other thing I would say is, is where I started very early on is when I felt the desire to yell, I took a deep breath. I took three rounds of a deep breath. So if you do yoga and you know, you know, you know the yoga breath, but if you're not a yogi, you like go ahead and Google the box breath and really teach yourself how to do a deep inhale and exhale. And when you feel like yelling, you replace the yell. You, uh, you, remember, you won't remember anything I'm saying right now. Cause when we're in those moments we're, we literally go dumb in the brain. Okay, we go into fight or flight. We can't think. Our cortisol levels are super high. So when you replace the yelling with the deep breath, it alters you biochemically, and then you can think clearly to start practicing some of the new tools that you've been filling your brain with. Yeah, that's, I think that's a really good place to start. Awesome. Thank you, Randy. Thanks, Anne.